Our motives are good, guys. We really want to do things right. But sometimes we struggle <coughs> and we're just too busy. The main question. Then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Is it a time for you yourselves to be living in your paneled houses while this house remains a ruin? Understand, in that day, most of the homes were small stone huts. They didn't have wood. It was up on the mountain. They had rocks and stones, so they built small stone huts. But the Jewish folks found a way to get all the wood down there, and they built big paneled homes for their families. While God's house was just an empty foundation. If you ever drove by a barn that caught fire, and you see all that debris wrapped up in there, but you still see the foundation around it, that's probably what this temple looked like. How do you think God felt? Your chosen people won't even take time to build my house. God's house lies in ruins. I think it's a matter of mistaken priorities. It's noticeable because of the people. <coughs> they generated money. They built stores. They put fields of crops out for a harvest. They did everything they could to reestablish their way of life. Except God's house. Haggai chapter 1 verses 7 through 10 on page 667 tells us this. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. Go up into the mountains and bring down timber and build the house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. You expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. What you brought home, I blew away. Why? Declares the Lord Almighty. Because my house, which remains a ruin, while each of you is busy with his own house. Therefore, because of you, the heavens have withheld their dew, and the earth its crop. They were planting crops, but they weren't getting much of a harvest. They were going to the store and buying bread, but the bread wasn't filling them. They were buying milk, but the milk would spoil before they could drink it. I remember walking up to Uncle Bob's store with a quarter and get a loaf of bread for mom. I can remember going to the gas station and listening to the older folks talking and saying, do you know bread's going to be a dollar a loaf pretty soon? I'd take a dollar a loaf today for bread, wouldn't you? I remember filling my car with gas at 38 cents a gallon. God has asked us all to do things. He said he would provide us the strength. He would provide us the courage. He would provide us the faith. If we just take the first step. A call to action. A call to action. In all of life, there's a time to talk. There's a time to act. There's a time to consider. There's a time to stop talking and start doing. For the people, for the Jewish people, this was their time to start to act. 
because they had not been honoring God. Every area of their life was suffering. And the only remedy was to stop making excuses and start doing what God had called them to do 16 years earlier when he returned them to Jerusalem. Now guys, this had to happen. The spirit of these people was downtrodden. They were afraid. They were scared. They didn't know what tomorrow would bring. But God's work, God's work, you know who it depends on? God. God puts his thought in our minds and in our hearts. God says, go do this. It's his work. And then he provides the strength, the energy, the desire. It's God who stirs up our spirits, who makes us excited, who gets us wound up. It's not us. We don't have anything to do with that. Now, I've been to ball games, and I've seen one side of the stand going absolutely nuts, and I've seen the other side of the stands wanting to crucify somebody. They're all wound up tighter in the spring. And what does it accomplish? Nothing. Nothing. If we would bottle a little of that excitement and cut it loose in the church, but not for us, for God, what would it do? Could we contain it? Would it spread like crazy? I think it would. A few years back, I heard a church up in Toronto had a ministry of laughing. Just out of the blue, they, they would start laughing in the church. And I know folks that flew hundreds and thousands of miles to go to this church just to laugh. I laugh every day. I think those who work with me probably do too because I don't always do things quite right. There's nothing wrong with laughing. But what we must understand is it's God Himself who stirs our spirits, who stirs our hearts, who gets us thinking about things. I'll never forget, I was mowing grass one Sunday and I had gotten an invite to go back to school. And we didn't have the money. There was no way. And I was mowing grass and I, and I felt God tugging at my heart. You need to go. You need to go. Come on. What are you doing? Why are you mowing grass when you should be studying? You need to get in school. You need to. And I was making every excuse under the sun not to go. The biggest thing was the cost of tuition. And guys, as sure as I'm standing here, I heard a voice, a small voice. And it simply said, check your mail. Check your mail. So I drove my garden director up to the mailbox. I opened it. And here was a letter from a company I used to work for. And I opened it, and inside of that letter, it stated how I was owed back commissions, and the owner felt really bad because he hadn't been quite truthful on his part and paid me those monies that were owed. Do you know that check was enough to pay for my first year of school? Now, I didn't do anything to deserve that, guys. God put the thoughts in my mind started to stir my spirit to get back to the original call he gave me at 15 year old right here at this altar. When he said, you need to preach, you need to pastor, are you ready? And I said, no. 
And for 40 years, not quite, 30 years, I wouldn't submit to that call. Finally, mowing my grass, God started working again. He provided the Spirit. He provided the strength. He provided the knowledge to get back into school. But God did it, not Dan. And He will do that in your lives the exact same way. If you just submit to what he's asked you to do. I don't know what that is, guys. Unless you tell me. And I'll help you any way I can. But God has a task for each and every one of us. Just like he had a task for these Jewish people to rebuild his temple. It was his desire to have a home where he could meet the people, where he could come and dwell with them. God will stir up our spirits. And then he'll stir you up and watch and see what will happen. What will happen? Met a fella few weeks ago and I told him I said I'm going to come visit you and I did and our whole conversation was him making excuses he was 20 years old I said what's ahead for you bud Oh, more tattoos and a few piercings. I said, what about work? What about it? What about a job? What about it? What about a church? What about it? Everything I said, I felt confrontation. You ever talk to somebody like that? And I'll be real honest with you, I got a little vocal. And I was trying to challenge him because, guys, I'm going to tell you, life out there owes you nothing. And the only thing you're going to get out of that out there is what you put into it. No one's going to give you a diploma and say, good job, unless you put forth the work and the requirements to get that. No one's going to give you a job unless you can prove to that employer you're the right person for it. And you'll do everything you can to prove that to them. And God will give you the strength to do that. This young man sat back and his eyes were kind of big. I said, I'm sorry. I came to visit you, not preach at you. I'm sorry. I probably ought to know. I stood up to leave. And he walked up to me and he threw his arms around me. And he said, nobody's ever said that to me before. Nobody. I said, what you got to do? He said, let's pray. I seen the young man a little time later. He, he was out putting in applications. He's living with his grandma. And he's trying to get back on track. When God puts something on your heart, don't let God down. Do it. He will provide. He will provide for you the strength, the opportunity, the knowledge at that specific time when he needs you to be his mouthpiece. Amen?